We are sitting in my backyard right now and I just finished packing, but I just wanted to start this vlog off um, with a little conversation because I'm going to Greece. I'm really, really excited. If you saw my last video, you already know that it's my brother-in-law's wedding. So we're gonna be going to a big, fat Greek Orthodox wedding. It's gonna take a long time for my fiance and I to actually get there in the first place. Where I live, I live on the west coast of the United States. So it's about a nine hour flight, a little bit over nine hours from our town to London. And then we're staying in London overnight. The next morning we have a flight from London to Athens, which is about another four hour-ish flight. And then we have another flight from Athens to a little island called Lemnos. So in total, we have about 14 hours of in-air time on an airplane. And then of course, we've got a long six hour layover in Athens. We've got a long layover in London. So it's gonna be very, very busy and it's gonna take us a couple days to get there. But I wanna take you on an adventure with me. And I really wanna do a lot of witchery in Athens as well because we're not just going for the wedding. We are going to explore. Not only are we gonna see some temples and some ancient sites of Greece, but I really wanna do, there's actually a couple rituals that I wanna do on the beach while we're in Athens. Not Athens, Lemnos, somewhere in Greece. There's gonna be lots of witchery happening is what I'm trying to say. But I wanted to talk about Greece for a second because I could arguably say that the two countries that really helped shape Western occultism or that had a massive impact on a lot of different traditions, especially if we're talking about ceremonial ceremonial magic is Greece and Egypt. Those are the two countries that I have been dying to go to for a really long time for so many different reasons. So if we're considering Greece, well, let's take Hermes Trismegistus for an example, or Hermes Trismegistus. I never really, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but he was the combination of the Greek god Hermes as well as the Egyptian god Thoth. And those two married together to create Hermes Trismegistus, Trismegistus, ugh, whatever. And then that was the birth of Hermeticism and Hermeticism Hermeticism is woven into so many different ceremonial magic traditions. If you think about the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn that was greatly influenced by Hermeticism, they kind of married in some Greek and Egyptian magic together, as well as brought in some elements from paganism and a bunch of other things. But the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was huge. There were so many spin-offs from that. I mean, thinking of just Wicca, how Wicca was influenced by the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. And then Wicca ended up having a massive impact on the witchcraft community. And don't even get me started. Don't even get me started at how cool the Greek pantheon is. I mean, Athena, Athena's my girl. I love Athena. So there's a lot in Greece. I'm really excited for it. Anyways, I think I've chatted enough and the wind is blowing in my face. So let's commence this vlog, shall we? <laughs> So we had checked into our hotel for the evening and we had just fallen asleep. We were super sleep deprived. And then all of a sudden this blaring alarm went off telling us to immediately evacuate the building, that there was some sort of fire. I've never heard an alarm speak to me before. So that was really odd, but we all evacuated the building and we're just kind of standing outside, not really sure what was happening at all. But luckily no one was hurt, no worries there. Our adrenaline was super high though. So by the time we actually got back into our hotel, room we did not sleep at all so we got zero sleep for the entire time traveling Limnos, um, super late last night. And when we got in, we immediately had to go to a family barbecue. It was like a huge Greek barbecue. It was so fun. It was one of the 
pre-wedding activities where all the families got to get together and meet, you know, everybody from the bridal parties. So that was really fun. Um, I'm in the Airbnb right now. So I thought that I would maybe show you around the place a little bit and then also show you this gorgeous view. Don't mind my my hair situation right now, but we have a gorgeous view out on the back balcony. So let me show you. So our Airbnb is very, very simple and it's very messy right now because we have an entire family staying here. Um, it is me and my fiance and his parents and his siblings and we're all just kind of staying at the same house together. So this is the back patio. I want to show you this view because it's so gorgeous. It's really kind of burnt looking though because it's so hot. There you can see, oh, you can see some of my fiance's family members walking to the beach right there. There's the water. And then over here, have some other buildings. Look at how pretty that is. I think the wind's picking up, so I don't know how that's gonna hit my microphone, but I'll go back inside. And then this Airbnb has a lower level where some other people are sleeping. But, um, so this is our upper level where we're staying. And then two bedrooms back here. Please excuse the super messy room. I probably should have made the bed before I started filming, whoops. And then out here, there is another balcony, although we have shut the, the shutters right now because it's so hot. Oh my goodness, it is so hot in here. So some of us, as you saw, headed to the beach this morning. I stayed back because the last 48 hours of just getting here in the first place was exhausting. So I had to sleep. I slept like, I don't know, 11 or 12 hours last night. I don't know. But I'm just kind of relaxing this morning. Actually, technically it's noon, but I'm just going to relax for a little bit. They're going to go to the beach. And then later today, I think we're going to check out the island a little bit more. It's not as hot as I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a lot hotter. So let's commence a wonderful little beach day. Oh, also, so the bride is Greek and obviously the groom, my brother-in-law, is not Greek. So just to clarify that a little bit further, but the bride's family brought over all these different breads and foods and whatnot. This sweet bread is so good. I don't even know. It's probably just the, I'm sure if a Greek person is watching this, they're probably like, oh yeah, that's like the most basic bread ever. But to me, as an American, okay, this bread is amazing. On that note, there's actually one more thing I wanted to add in here that I did not talk about is how amazing the food is. Okay, not just that sweet bread, the food that we had at this family's barbecue, the best food I've ever had in my entire life. And this morning they brought over leftovers. So we had some chicken, we had some Greek salad and they grow watermelons here, which is mind blowing to me because when I, I live on the West Coast, obviously, and we can't grow watermelons in our zone. It's not hot enough. So the fact that they can grow watermelons here, I mean, I know watermelons are grown here, but the fact that we get to eat watermelon that was actually grown here, ugh, love it. Okay, now we can commence a beach day. I have a travel tip for any aspiring travelers out there. Through all my international travels, I have learned that solo experiences are spiritual experiences. Try to find times where you can safely go off on your own because when you're alone in an unfamiliar environment, it forces you to see the deeper meaning of life. My family stayed up on the beach as I went swimming in the Aegean Sea all by myself, surrounded by crystal clear blue water and desert mountains. It was a total surreal experience.
So we ended up hiking up this mountain and we came across some mountain goats. This is my attempt. This is terrible footage, by the way, but you can see them up on the mountain. There are three things that are abundant in this particular island. There are stray cats, ancient ruins, and a bunch of mountain goats. So anyways, we hiked up to the top of this mountain where there was a little small cave, a little small inlet on the very top. And inside this small cave was a church without a roof. It's also called Panagia Kakaviotisa. It's a historic church that's situated near the village of Thanos and it's built into this rock cavity on the side of Kakavos Mountain. And it was originally used as a place of shelter by monks on the island. It was founded in 1416 AC by some monks who were managing to escape a Turkish invasion. So this is a place for hermits, for solitude, for meditation. But what I really loved was the absolute incredible incredible views. again it is the day of the wedding and I just did my hair and my makeup I have not put my outfit on yet I'll show you the dress hopefully in a little bit I am very lucky in that I am not in the bridal party so I don't have to do anything today I just have to sit back enjoy my time I've been in a lot of weddings I've been a bridesmaid many many times I've been a maid of honor many times this is the first time that I'm actually attending a wedding where I don't have to do anything I don't have to be part of the bridal party i can just sit back and relax and enjoy the food and everything my fiance though is in the bridal party so they're doing their own thing everybody's getting hair and makeup done right now also apparently it's customary for there to be a whole caravan like a whole party train going around the village honking horns as the bride and groom head to the church so we have this party train that's going to go on we just decorated the cars so what you do is you take your cars you clean them off and you put some some bows on them just some simple decorations and the groom goes first so the groom will be driving to the church first and then everyone else will caravan behind them in separate cars honking their horns as they make their way to the church and then the bride goes second and then everybody following the bride everybody goes to the church and honks their horns so I'll see if I can get some footage of that but I'm so excited this town I haven't had a chance to actually talk about the small island of Lemnos yet because it's it's a very small desert island between Turkey and Greece. I always, I want to say it's Turkey, but I know that the pronunciation, I think as of 2021, Turkey is trying to get the world to pronounce it the way it's supposed to be pronounced, which I think is Turkey. Um, I don't know if that's correct or not. So if somebody lives in, in Turkey, please correct me and let me know. But anyways, so this island is almost closer to Turkey than it is to Greece. And it's a, it's a desert. So it's the only part of Greece that's actually considered a desert so this island is very dry and very brown and hot you've been able to probably see that from the scenery so far and it's not really a touristy island either it's not like those Greek islands that everybody goes to with like the white buildings along the shore and all that I mean those islands are gorgeous but this is very much a small town authentic Greek Orthodox experience there's not a lot of tourists on this island it really is mostly locals I think if there are a couple tourists, I've um, run into some Italians and some French people. But other than that, it's really not a touristy island. There's basically just a couple little villages scattered across the island. And then in between the villages is like barren land. You are driving through a desert. So I really feel like I'm getting an authentic Greek experience here, which is incredible. The Greek families that we've been hanging out with and having food with are just so wonderful and lovely. And by the way, technically it's a big fat 
Lemnian wedding because we're on the island of Lemnos. Not a big fact Greek wedding, although it is also still Greek. But anyways, I'm excited for the wedding today. I don't know if I will be able to get footage or not, so we will see. Meta, which is a horrible Greek good morning. Um, if you're a Greek person watching this, you have full permission to make fun of my Greek. I'm trying my best, okay? So we are three days into the future and I have a lot of stuff to catch you up on. I tried to find the best lighting in this hotel room because I'm in a new place, but you know, it is what it is. So I think the last thing that I filmed was the wedding, which was amazing. And I wanted to talk about the ceremony a little bit because as I mentioned, it was a Greek, it was a traditional Greek Orthodox wedding, which is very similar to Catholicism and watching the whole ceremony as a witch or as an occultist it was really interesting to see because I feel like when I was a non-magical person if that's a word I viewed life through a very different lens than I do now and so watching the ceremony they did everything three times so there was a, a crowning ceremony there was um, the the man officiating it which I'm not sure what his title was he had the bride and groom drink from this wine glass three times he blessed their foreheads three times and then they had to walk around a table three times the entire time that I'm watching this ceremony this is just a binding ceremony it's just a fancy witchy binding ceremony that's all it is it's magic and it's funny to watch these religious rituals and how is that not occultism. How is that not just casting a spell and binding someone to you for all of eternity? So it was very witchy and I wish I could have told them that, but obviously they would have been extremely offended if, if I had said something like that. But I actually really, I've always found religion fascinating. Even when I was younger, I would research all these different religions across the globe because there is just a certain level of esotericism in every religion. Some people call it magic, some people call it miracles, but there is this, I don't know, magical component to all of it. And I've always said that Jesus was either a witch and or a ceremonial magician. And I feel like a lot of parts of Christianity are straight up witchcraft. And I know that that's very controversial to say, but when I do a binding ceremony, it looks very, very similar to that. So it was it was just really cool to watch the, the chanting, the low toned singing, the walking around the table three times and all of that. It was a very, very different than a standard non-religious American wedding. Like the structure was totally different. And then we left the church. The church was gorgeous. It was up on this hilltop, by the way. I think, I hope you could see that with some of the clips that I got. It was at the very top of this hilltop overlooking the whole ocean. But we went to a beach bar afterwards to sell 
celebrate and they had rented out the entire beach bar just for the wedding because there were so many people in the wedding so it was sitting right on this beach we had lots of drinks and dancing and i wish i could have caught some of the traditional dances on camera i tried to get a couple little clips and i'm going to attempt to include some of those in this video so you may or may not have already seen that before this clip but i think youtube will probably give me a copyright strike for the music so i may or may not be able to include that but i wish i could show you all of the greek dances that they did it was so fun to watch and it's funny because when we got there so my fiance is in the bridal party right and um so they were sitting like with the bridal party and for me i was sat at a table where i knew absolutely no one it was like all greek people and i didn't know anybody i was super intimidated because you know i'm more of a shy introvert person so i go and sit down at this table they're all lovely they're all so lovely they're like oh do you want a glass of wine like we just had conversation flowing the whole night and um it's funny because those that don't know i don't drink like really hardly ever i'll drink if it's like a special occasion or something but i don't usually drink and so i was like sure pour me a glass of wine it's a wedding you know it's a wedding i'll have a glass of wine and so they, i ended up having six glasses of wine that night and my tolerance is very low because i don't drink so i was super hungover the next day and that is why i was not able to film the following day <laughs> because we didn't get in until like five in the morning it was so late something like that maybe we fell asleep around five but it was super super late and the next day we just slept in we're super hungover we went to the beach we swam in the ocean for a while and then we just laid up on the sand like beach whales and <laughs> we just had a really really um lazy day we did end the night in mirana though we did go out to dinner in mirana and there's this beautiful boardwalk where there's a bunch of yachts on the water and you can walk along the boardwalk there's a bunch of shops with with lots of little trinkets and ice cream shops and you know the whole thing so we kind of got to walk through Mirna a little bit and explore that city before we left and then it was time to leave Lemnos so yesterday now we're catching up to speed yesterday we left Lemnos and we flew into Athens as of yesterday and so after flying into Athens we took a taxi we are now in our new hotel room but the reason why I didn't film anything yesterday is because I get super super sick on flights and that flight in particular was really bad. So we just stayed in the hotel room for the, pretty much the rest of the day. I think I laid in bed for like 12 hours or something. But I wanna tell you about this hotel room because it's amazing and I highly recommend it. So it's called Athens Lodge Boutique Hotel. The rooms are gorgeous. The hotel itself is gorgeous. And it's really not that expensive either. I mean, I tried to find something that was not the absolute cheapest, but maybe like one step up from the cheapest. And this is so nice because the location is perfect we can walk pretty much anywhere we don't have to worry about getting transportation or anything like that and then also if you walk up to the window and look out outside of the window there's a little restaurant called little kook oh, it's not technically i think it's a patisserie is what it is but this place i am so excited to take you to this place later on because it's actually a place i found on tiktok and it looks really really cool so we're gonna check it out together later on but anyways this hotel the breakfast is really great we had breakfast this morning they had lots of meats and veggies and f fresh pretty much everything they even had like this jam bar where they had all these different jams i think the strawberry papaya was my favorite it was really good and they've got like teas like loose leaf teas and coffees and all that so i definitely recommend checking out this hotel because you can walk pretty much anywhere from here so the game plan for today now you are caught up to speed um we haven't really explored athens yet because i was really feeling sick the past couple days but today I think we're going to do a historical day. So we're going to check out some temples. I really want to hit, you know, Acropolis. I really want to see Athena's temple and maybe pray to Athena a little bit. I, I haven't really worked exclusively with Athena, but I've been drawn to her for a really long time so i want to go to her temple see what that's like we may hit the temple of zeus and maybe hephaestus i'm not really sure there's a lot of historical sites and honestly we're probably not going to hit all of them because it's 95 degrees and we're walking everywhere very very hot so today is the historical day and then tomorrow is going to be i think more of a culture day where we're going to go to monastiraki square we're going to go to plaka we're going to um go to the food markets you know just like eat a lot of food people walk 
watch, that type of stuff. And then I still want to do some witchery at some point. I haven't really gotten a chance to do much witchery. I thought that I'd be able to do a ritual on the beach that I really wanted to do, but there has been no time for that. With the wedding stuff, there was just no time. And then there was also a ritual that I wanted to do with a lock and key. I had a, um, a key and a lock and I was going to keep the key, but then take the lock quick tip by the way if you're traveling somewhere and you want to be able to access that energy later on for spell work and ritual you can do a little ritual where you um you marry the the key and the lock together and then you take the lock and you lock it somewhere wherever that land is that you want to be tethered to so i was going to lock it somewhere in greece and then take the key home and then you just use the key in your spell work or in your rituals or whatever but guess what i forgot my lock and key at home I'm so annoyed with myself. So if there is a little shop that has like a lock and key set anywhere, I'd love to pick one up because I'd love to still do that ritual if possible. But if not, it's not a big deal. I've got some souvenirs that I've picked up that I'll also show you later on that I can still use in rituals, even if I don't do the lock and key thing. So anyways, that is the game plan. Well, we don't know where we're going, but at least we're walking alongside some beautiful scenery. It is so hot here today that my phone is unusable, but that's okay. Oh, your phone is bad too? Your phone's fine? Okay, well that's good. Almost to the top. Just 2,000 more steps, and then we're there. Temples are offerings to the gods, and among ancient Greece, common offerings also include libations. Did you know a libation is an offering involving the ritual of pouring some sort of liquid? And in ancient Greece, this commonly consisted of watered down wine, honey, olive oil, water, or milk. It was a basic aspect of religion in ancient Greece and possibly the most common religious practice. They would perform libations at the beginning and end of every day and at the beginning of meals paired with a prayer to the gods, which was typically performed while standing upright and sometimes with their arms raised up. So here we entered the Acropolis of Athens, which is an ancient citadel containing the remains of several ancient buildings. And some temples only have fragments left. For a moment, it felt like the magic was gone between the construction zones where they were rebuilding temples and all the people walking around in modern clothing. It just didn't feel very ancient, but I did find a spot by a tree where I was able to connect to the energy of this area. The Parthenon and a few other buildings were actually severely damaged during a 1687 siege. Since then, there have been a couple attempts to rebuild the temples. One attempt using steel completely destroyed one of the buildings. So now they're rebuilding the temples with better materials such as marble and titanium, which won't expand and contract like steel. I've been to a couple ancient sites across the globe and I have to admit the energy was a little difficult for me to connect to here. Maybe it was just me, maybe it was the construction or the people. It just didn't feel as spiritually heavy as, say, Stonehenge did for me. But regardless, it was incredible seeing the remains of these monumental offerings. We just got done with um, Acropolis Hill. I hope that you can hear me okay. It's pretty loud around here. There are so many people and it is so hot. There's a quick tip I have for you. If you are a white person like me, like very white, I'm talking like my heritage is 90% Scottish and Upper England, as well as a little bit of Northern Ireland, and then I have a little bit of Norwegian. I put on SPF 50, and I am still getting sunburned, and I'm applying it every 30 minutes. I mean, it's caked on my arms right now, and I am still getting just totally burnt. We haven't even been out in the sun for that long, and I'm just getting super pink, so I'm trying to take a break in the shade. I cannot believe how sunburnt I'm getting. I thought SPF 50 would do it, but apparently Apparently I'm just too white to be in the sun like this. Oh, we're really walking in a barren desert now. No idea where we are. Trying to find the prison of Socrates and then Hephaestus, but you know, I don't really know where we're gonna end up. Well, while I'm taking a minute to rest in, I don't even know where I am right now, but I just need to sit down for a minute. I want you to appreciate these birds, crickets, I don't know, I haven't been able to figure out what it is, but it sounds really weird. What's your theory? We don't know. We don't know what the sound is. It sounds cool though. Okay, here's our game plan. We're going up these steps. We're gonna keep climbing up this mountain. We started way down below, way down there. I definitely don't think this is the right way to the prison of Socrates. I do not recommend it, but we're supposed to go 
all the way up there and I'm pretty sure people get tours. I think they get like mopeds or something to take them up here. I don't know, the Google Maps isn't working for us because it's too hot, so uh, let's hope we make it. This is how far we've walked. That's Acropolis right there and that's where we were just a little bit ago. We were right in this area and we walked all the way over here. Oh man. Whilst I was dying in the heat, I noticed many olive trees along our path and so I attempted to connect to the spirit of the olive and it felt very soothing and calming to me. But we eventually found ourselves on top of Philippopos Hill, which gives you panoramic views of the entire city. If you don't mind making your way up the hill, the view was absolutely worth it. And there's a monument up at the top to see as well as a, a couple more statues. We walked a total of five miles up and down hills in 95 degree weather and I do not recommend it. Get public transportation. There's a hop on hop off service that they do. We eventually found the prison of Socrates and according to tradition, the caves were Socrates' prison. Here the philosopher is said to have been held captive before the beginning of his trial, before he was sentenced to death by the hemlock cup. However, scientists question this theory and some claim that the actual prison was located next to the ancient Agora, but I wanted to take a moment to appreciate Socrates because Socrates' major contribution was that he stated, if you know that you know nothing, then you truly know something. And what he means by this is that if a person has an assumption about something and thinks he knows everything, that person is a fool. But if you know that you don't know anything about something, only then can you learn things about it and reach the core of the subject. Later on, Plato ended up becoming his student. And because of Plato, we have the entire Neoplatonism movement that helped shape Western occultism as well. Afterwards, we found this cute little cafe to grab lunch and all the pictures on the wall were of black and white photos of celebrities holding cats. We had some fresh ginger and mint lemonade, which was honestly the best lemonade I've ever had in my life. We then had some delicious food that I can't pronounce, so I won't even try on here. But afterwards, we were exhausted. We were exhausted from all the activity, so we decided to walk our way back to the hotel and lay down for pretty much the rest of the afternoon. Yasas, which is hello in Greek, again with my terrible Greek. Um, I have been trying to speak more, but I'm not going to put too much of it on camera and subject you all to that. Anyways, so my hair is crazy this morning because it's really hot and I don't feel like doing my hair, so you're just going to have to... I guess, deal with the aesthetic of that. So yesterday we ended up just staying in the hotel room for hours. We were exhausted after walking around that much. And yesterday was kind of one of those days where we we wanted to do a whole historical day to kind of get it out of the way. I wanted to appreciate those ancient sites, but at the same time, it felt a little touristy and a little, I don't know, inauthentic. I don't really want to say that, but you know what I mean? Like we had to get the touristy stuff out of the way. So now today we can focus more on culture, which I'm really, really excited about. So last night we did actually end up going out again. I met a subscriber, a creevy. She is amazing. Oh my goodness. So we had been emailing back and forth for a little bit and we decided to meet up last night for dinner. And so she took us out of the touristy part of town and we went to this little restaurant and they had the best food ever. Oh my goodness. We had this octopus that tasted a little lemony. Um, I've had calamari before, you know, octopus that's deep fried, but I've never had octopus in pieces like this. And there were so many different meats and the hummus was amazing. And oh my gosh, the dinner was just lovely. I learned so much from a crevy. So thank you so much for meeting me for dinner. She did give me consent to share her name online. So we got back from dinner around midnight, one 1 a.m. Uh, went to bed and then we just slept in this morning. So it's actually like one in the afternoon right now and we haven't even left our hotel room yet. But <laughs> what I'm learning is that you really kind of like sleep during the day because it's so hot. And then you go out at night and stay up until like, you know, two or three in the morning because it's cooler and you can walk around the city and everything's so alive. All the shops are open, people are drinking, you know, it's a great time. So it's not like we need to be out during the day to really enjoy ourselves. So we're kind of staying in the air conditioning this early this 
afternoon and then later i'm going to take you to little kook i'm so excited we're gonna we're gonna do that i'm looking at it right now and there's so many people outside right now but we're gonna start our day with little kook we're also gonna go to um the monastraki square we're gonna go to plaka we're gonna do a lot of like shopping and culture stuff today but before we do all that i wanted to kind of talk about what i've learned so far from a culture aspect and specifically not just a culture aspect but specifically when it comes to magic and witchcraft and mysticism so it's really funny i don't know if you are familiar with the evil eye or not but the evil eye symbol here's an example of it this is my necklace here it is called mati and i had no idea that the evil eye was so integral to greek culture so i the evil eye is something that i was exposed to when i was a buddhist because the evil eye symbol is prominent in many different cultures it is in buddhism and hinduism all across the world but i had no idea that it was so important to greek culture as well and so this little necklace is actually something that i got a long time ago and for some reason i just felt this little before i was headed to this trip when i was packing i got this little note of intuition i was like you know what i should bring my evil eye pendant i'm not really sure why but i just feel like i need it on this trip and i thought it's because i would need some extra protection little did i know if you walk around with this like this is part of the culture so anyways if you're not familiar this is the evil eye symbol and basically what it does is it protects you from the evil eye and so there's many different interpretations of this but it's a really great protection charm because the evil eye can be cast from one person to another just from a bitter or spiteful look if someone's jealous of you or they're they're wishing ill intent or some sort of malice towards you the evil eye protects you from that malice or that ill intent and so some people say that if you catch the evil eye from someone then you may feel lethargic you may have a string of bad luck on you or just some common common symptoms of being hexed or cursed so to protect yourself from that evil eye it's good to wear a pendant um there's a couple other ways that you can kind of protect yourself from catching the evil eye but what i was learning from a creepy is that apparently every grandma here knows how to remove the evil eye so what you would do because it's also called mati and so what you would do is you would go to your grandma and say grandma i have the evil eye remove it for me and then grandma would take off the evil eye for you how witchy is that it's so so, so witchy I mean it's not appropriate to call it witchy or to call it witchcraft but to me it feels so witchy so anyways I wanted to pick up because if you if you go into any shop here it's all over you will see the evil eye in every shop around here as you're walking along the streets the evil eye symbol is in almost every store that I've seen it's so so important to Greek culture so I found this gorgeous evil eye piece that I really wanted to show you. So this is the evil eye piece that I picked up. It is um, handmade. So when I was looking through these, this is, I think it's a piece of blown glass, but all of them were slightly different. There were no two that were the same. So I got this one because it really spoke to me and it's beautiful and you can hang it up in a window and, um, and kind of protect your room or protect your space. So I think what I'm gonna do when I get home is I'm gonna take this piece home with me and do some sort of consecration ritual so I can establish this as a protection ward and then I'm going to hang it up somewhere where I want a little bit extra protection. So I had to share that with you because Mati is something so close to my heart without even coming to Greece. And then it was funny because uh, when I was talking to Akrivi, she was like, you're so Greek. <laughs> And I didn't even know, I didn't even know that this was a thing, you know? Here I was wearing my Eve Lie pendant, walking around, not realizing that it's a big part of the culture. So that was a really funny um, coincidence or maybe just a really good thing that I listened to my own intuition But when I was packing my bags. So anyways, there's evil eyes everywhere. I thought that was really interesting. Another thing that I wanted to share that I wanted to talk about is the olive tree or just working with the spirit of the olive in general because I have seen so many olive trees around as I mentioned just very briefly yesterday, I attempted to connect to the spirit of the olive tree and also the use of olive oil in a lot of different things or just eating olives with pretty much every single meal. And the olive tree, there's actually a story in ancient Greek mythology about the olive tree, so I kind of wanted to share that. But what I got from the olive tree when I was 
attempting to connect to that spirit. It was just very peaceful and soothing. That was the feeling that I got, though I didn't have much time to connect with it, and I'm sure if I spent more time to connect with it that I would probably get a little bit more out of it. Plus, I was sweating. It was super hot outside. I'm pretty sure I almost hit heat exhaustion, so it's not like my intuition was working, firing on all cylinders, if you know what I mean. But in Greek mythology, Zeus held a contest between Poseidon and Athena, and he asked both of them to make an offering. So Poseidon took his trident and he smashed it against something to create create some sort of spring, and then Athena called forth a beautiful and soft olive tree, and Zeus actually declared Athena the winner. So an olive tree has been a really important symbol in Greek mythology ever since. And I think the most common use that I've seen or that I've heard of, that I've read, etc., is this peace and tranquility. There is this peace and friendship aspect to the olive tree, but it's also used in a lot of different ways. So you can use the olive tree or just olive oil in general for protection. I mean, there's a whole long list of what you can use it for. You can even use it in prosperity workings as well. It's a very, very prosperous and good plant with good fortune attached to it. So I think it's something that you can use for a lot of different spells. If you have olive oil at home and you want to connect with that, if you don't have olive trees that grow in your area, I always love using olive oil as a base for all of my magical oils anyways. So I'm really, really glad that I finally got to connect with the actual tree where it grows in its natural habitat. And it's interesting to see too, because walking around Athens, there's a lot of apartments with like balconies and whatnot and people grow olive trees on the their back porch, their balconies. And so we're walking through, and I think figs is another popular one too that I've seen. I know there's many, many different plant spirits to connect to in Greece. I just wanted to connect to the olive tree in particular because first of all, I love using olive oil in my magical oils. And second of all, I know how integral it is to Greek mythology and how important the olive tree is. But yeah, there's, there's figs, there's so many other plant spirits that you can work with here but so many apartments on their back balcony, I have seen those plants um, sitting there. So I thought that was really interesting. Anyways, let's go to, shall we just have a little adventure today? I think I might just do a little montage of all the things that we see, but let's start at Little Kook. It is this gorgeous little patisserie, as I mentioned beforehand. I'm really excited to try their, their food because it looks beautiful. It's just so aesthetically pleasing. So let's just have a fun day together.
while I'm irritated because we are skipping forward two days and I had tons of footage. By the way, I have fully edited the vlog up until this point and I'm a little irritated because the weather is what it is. It's been super hot. My camera and my phone have both been overheating and when that happens, it pixelates the videos a lot. And so all of the footage that I took, I, there was so much stuff that we did over the past couple days. Um, all the footage is completely unusable. So I tried to salvage what I could. I am so sorry if some of the, the images or the, the videos in the last little bit were blurry. I tried to pick the best ones <laughs> that were at least still watchable but I'm so sad that a lot of my footage ended up turning out to be super blurry. But it is what it is. I guess that experience was meant to be just for me and the, the people here or whatever. But I wanted to do a quick show and tell with you, I guess we could call it, because I picked up a couple things as we were wandering around Athens the past two days. By the way, we just got back from probably the fanciest dinner I have ever been to in my entire life. You have to take this really creepy underground tunnel train thing. I don't even know what it's called. What is it called? Cable car. Okay, you take this cable car into this tunnel that goes up the side of the mountain and it goes all the way up. It's all, it all sounds rickety and terrifying. And anyways, it takes you to the very top of this hill. Um, I'll, put it, uh, I'll put the restaurant that we went to up on the screen in case anybody wants to check it out but it's this restaurant on top of a hilltop that overlooks the entire city of Athens and you can see Acropolis you can see literally everything and the view is amazing so we were up on this hilltop everybody was dressed in evening gowns we had lobster linguine which was very very fancy I have never had lobster linguine in my life so that was an adventure trying to open the lobster I'm not I don't know if I'm cut out for this life but anyway so we just got back from this super fancy dinner. Let me show you the things that we picked up in Athens. So I have this thing. Whenever we travel, we're tra my partner and I are trying to build a mural of different things that we've collected across our travels. So like, for example, when we were in Berlin, we picked up these records. There was some guy on the side of the street spray painting records um, with his beautiful artwork. And so we picked up a couple records and then we have the records hanging on the wall. And so we wanted to pick up, you know, little masks, just little things that we can hang on the wall to kind of showcase um, so just some sort of memorabilia from our trips. So we ended up picking up Athena's helmet. Isn't this gorgeous? I'm gonna try to show you um, without my face in the way, but it has the owls on it. This is such a weird angle that I'm holding the camera, but the owls are representative of Athena. So this is her helmet and Athena is the goddess of wisdom and war and strategy and a bunch of different things, but it is um, a ceramic and it has a little hook on the back so we can hang it up on the wall next to our records from Berlin and a couple other things that we'll be adding to that mural. And then from the vintage market, because there was a little, there was a whole, vintage market and a whole flea market that we went to and unfortunately when we went to the flea market all that footage is like I said unusable so I didn't get to show you that but I did pick up this skull which I thought was beautiful it's very heavy and I hope it doesn't weigh down my suitcase too much we'll see I left room in my suitcase for a reason so I thought this skull was really really beautiful it's got like the cloud design i don't even know what it uh, what to call that you know what i'm saying it's got like the little swirlies it reminds me of zeus a little bit so pick that up and then i have been wanting one of these for a really long time i got a genie lamp look at this beautiful little genie lamp and the top does come off but i'm only one-handed right now so i can't really show you but i have been dying to get a genie lamp forever because i have always wanted to create a servitor and house them in a genie lamp because I've said multiple times that it's almost kind of like a genie in a bottle with servitors. And so look, I have one now. How magical is that? Let me see if I can get the, um, the lid off one-handed. Okay, so as you can see, lid comes off and I could just store a magical entity in there. Oh, I'm so excited. So that is my mini Athens show and tell is what I'm trying to say. It's nighttime and it's just gorgeous outside. Let me just kind of show you. Oh, I don't know if you can see or not. Can you see the people? There's like a million people down there. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna go to bed and tomorrow morning we have our flight back to London and then we have our flight back home. I think we have a full day. Oh, I forgot to mention, did you see that footage of me getting a tattoo? Because 
because what? I love how it turned out. I'm obsessed with it. I'm so happy to have gotten the evil eye tattoo. I didn't even, I wasn't even planning on getting that this trip. We just spontaneously, my partner and I both got tattoos and we spontaneously said, you know what? Let's do it, let's get tattoos. We're here, we're doing it. I'm already connected to the evil eye, so I put it on. I wanted to have it somewhat close to my feet, so that's why I got it close to my ankle, because anywhere that my feet take me, I want to be protected from the evil eye. And I don't know if you've ever done this before with tattoos, but I love to use the pain from the tattooing session to charge up that symbol and to do a little spell work in my own mind during the tattoo session. So that was something that I, I did just in the couple minutes it took for him to tattoo that symbol onto my leg. So anyways, we may get more tattoos in London. I'm not really sure yet, but uh, we're going to fly out tomorrow morning, go back to London for about a day. We have almost a full 24 hours in London. So I don't know if I'm going to film anything while we're there. I, I love London. I've been a bunch of times and um, I think we're just going to kind of take it easy because this trip has been very exhausting. So I will see you at home. of traveling later and I am finally back home and I wanted to kind of recap this trip because there was a couple after editing this vlog there was a couple things that I didn't say that I wanted to mention so let's have just like a little chat while I cleanse some of the items that I got I really want to do a just a really simple smoke cleansing from an incense blend that I made myself for a very specific intention so I'm gonna be smoke cleansing these items and then these two items in particular the skull and the genie lamp that I got from the the vintage market or the flea market I can feel that these need a little bit extra cleansing so I'm gonna take my Florida water and cleanse these just a little bit extra before I run them through the smoke I don't want to totally sterilize these objects because I want to keep that energy from grease but there have been a lot of hands on these items and I do not want other people's energy so it's just gonna be a really gentle cleansing that I'm gonna do here but anyways I wanted to talk about I want to talk about folk magic a little bit more and then I wanted to talk about astral cartography and probably a couple other things too but um so as far as folk magic goes there was so much that I ended up seeing that I didn't speak about and I kind of wanted to recap some of that here because I find it really interesting. I would say that Greece is probably one of the more religious countries that I've been to so far. I mean, you can't go anywhere without seeing a cross being posted. And where I live, it's not, I mean, there is the Bible Belt in the United States, okay? There is that. But where I live in Washington State, it is nothing like this. You don't typically see crosses posted up in restaurants and cafes and, and businesses and whatnot. But everywhere we went, there was a cross, even in the little cafe where we went to have lunch. There were restaurants restaurants and other shops with the name Holy in it. I mean, there were a couple restaurants that we ran into that had the name Holy in it. Even our tattoo parlor was called Holy Tattoo. And even our taxi driver, we took a taxi from the airport to our hotel. So as we were driving along the interstate, our taxi driver, every time we passed a big, beautiful church, he would do his ritual, you know? And I thought that was so interesting. And it just seemed like everybody I was talking to, everybody either wore the evil eye or a cross around their neck. So it was a little bit of a culture shock for me because I live in an area where that's really not the case. You, I mean, you'll see a couple people maybe walking around with a cross and we have churches and whatnot, but the area overall was just a lot more religious than what I'm used to. And even when it comes to folk magic and superstitions, I mean, I saw garlic hanging up at a lot of different shops because you would hang garlic by the front door or up uh, in one of the corners or whatever to ward off negativity or to ward off evil spirits. And so I thought it was really interesting. But for me, walking through Greece as a witch, everything I saw, I was like, that's so witchy. That's witchcraft. That's folk magic, you know, and all the superstitions that go along with, you know, you cheers your drink a certain way, but then you don't cheers with coffee because that's bad luck and all these little superstitions. It was just really, really interesting to learn about. And I wanted to reflect a little bit more because I was talking about olive, right? The olive tree, working with the olive tree spirit and how I was able to finally connect with it a little bit as it's growing in its natural habitat. And as I mentioned earlier, in this video, I use olive oil as the base for pretty much all my magical oils. And I wanted to elaborate on the olive plant because I was reflecting on this and I came across a little bit of I don't know, a certain level of personal gnosis when it comes to working with this plant spirit. And my personal gnosis is that 
olive, if you think of the phrase extending an olive branch to someone, when you are extending an olive branch to someone, that phrase typically means you are offering a helping hand, you are helping that person out. And the olive tree to me just felt so peaceful and it was really geared towards friendship and helping other people. And I found that interesting because the further I reflected on that, the more I reflected on my experiences with olive oil when using them in magical oils. I've always felt like olive oil kind of binds everything together and really just amplifies the energies that are already there. I need to switch to my smoke cleansing, but let me finish this thought really quick. When I'm using olive oil as the base for my magical oils, or if I'm using it to anoint a candle or whatever, it doesn't feel like olive really has a ton of unique energy on its own. It's more like whatever you pair with olive is going to be enhanced and it's really going to bind everything together. It's going to extend an olive branch, a helping hand to all the other ingredients of the spell to really build those friendships and connections between the different ingredients so that they can work cohesively together. So for me, I feel like the olive tree and olive oil in general is really just lending a helping hand to your spell to magnify everything else. So I'm just really happy that I got that opportunity to connect with olive a little bit deeper. Let me grab my smoke cleansing. Oh, another thing that I learned before I move on to astrocartography, but like I mentioned, there's so there's so many superstitions. Um, I think that one really good one that I found was really interesting was spitting. You would spit to bring good fortune. And even if you don't actually spit, you can just make the sound and you spit three times to bring good fortune to you. I really loved that one. And it's so funny because that's also very Egyptian. If you get into Egyptian magic, there's a lot of spitting. Um, so I thought that was really funny. There's so much, I, I want to really deep dive into Greco-Egyptian magic. There's so many books on my list that I need to read because the melding of Greek and Egyptian cultures, especially as it pertains to occultism is really fascinating. But anyways, um, I kind of wanted to talk about astrocartography because that was something that was really helpful on my trip as well and I ended up getting an astral cartography reading because I'm very much into Hellenistic astrology but I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to astral cartography and if you're not aware astral cartography is location based astrology so you're basically looking at a map of the world and you're seeing the lines of where all the planets were when you were born and there are certain areas that are said to be more prosperous for you for certain things or certain areas to maybe avoid so if you like to travel a lot, like me, it's helpful to know which areas are prosperous for you and you could take advantage of it for spell work or not even just for spell work, just for anything really. Or if you're contemplating moving somewhere, it's good to consider, you know, maybe have an astrocartography reading done. So anyways, I had mine done through Hannah. She has a YouTube channel called Simply Witched love her. Love, love, love her so much. This video is not sponsored or anything, but I'll link her stuff um, in the description box. She was so organized. She even gave me a PDF and everything, which my type A heart loves so much. Just a beautiful PDF. And she actually teaches you how to do your own reading so that you can be self-sufficient later on if you have more questions that come up. Anyways, I had a reading with Hannah before I left. So I was able to look at Greece and see which areas would correspond to different aspects of my life. So like if you move somewhere that is, let's say close to your Venus line, if you're living right on your Venus line, that's said to enhance, uh, you know, relationships, interpersonal relationships and love. Or if you're near your Mercury line, for example, she helped me find a couple coffee shops that correspond to my Mercury line. And so now I can go into those coffee shops and write. I can do my writing project in those coffee shops and be a little bit more intellectually stimulated. So I had to mention the astro cartography because that has been a total game changer for me. I don't think I'll ever not look at the map before I go traveling ever again because who knows I may never ever again go back to Greece. So while I'm there I want to take advantage of the energy specifically for me too because it's different for everybody. I mean what Greece does to me is not going to be, <laughs> be the same as what Greece does to someone else. So anyways I just had to throw that in there. And then one last thing that I wanted to talk about is that while I was gone, you guys, this channel, this channel hit 20,000 subscribers while I was gone. 
what? That is so crazy. I'm so, I'm, I, I was just really, really excited when I got back home and I saw that. I was like, are you kidding me? That's amazing. So I think it's time to do another q and A. I I did a q and A at 2K subscribers, 3K, 5K, and then another q and A at my one year anniversary, which was around my 10K mark. So it's 20K. It's time to do another q and A where we can just have a good long chat about occult nonsense, whatever people want to talk about. So anyways, um, I just had to express some gratitude. So thank you so much. Also, I was reading um, some of the comments when I got back, you know, because people were trying to keep my channel in the algorithm while I was gone. And I just wanted to say thank you so, so, so much. I was not able to respond to everybody, but I really, really appreciate you watching some of my older content when I was gone, just keeping my channel in the algorithm. This was the longest break I've taken from YouTube. And I also wanted to say I missed you guys. I didn't realize how much I would miss YouTube taking like two, two, three-ish weeks off or whatever it was before I became a YouTuber and I would watch other people. Um, they would be like, oh my gosh, I missed you guys so much. And I'd look at them side eye. I'd be like, what do you mean you missed us so much? You don't even know me. But now I get it. I get it because I have built relationships in the comments and even people that don't comment, I appreciate your support. It just means a lot to me and I really did actually miss YouTube. So that's kind of crazy. Anyways, I'm back. I have a ton of stuff that I wanna do over the next couple months. So uh, prepare yourself another IV information overload. Can I trademark that? <laughs> I'm starting to smoke myself out a little bit. IV information overload. <laughs> I'm so glad that I've met nerdy people like me that can just nerd out on this stuff because, man, I go into hyper-focus, and if I talk to my regular friends outside of YouTube, my regular friends, my non-magical friends, they're like, oh, okay, can you stop talking about this now, please? So I'm glad that I finally found my people where I can actually talk about this endlessly, and you get it. You totally, totally get it. So let's do a code word. I'm gonna wrap this video up. I haven't done a code word in a really long time. If you are brand new to this channel, Channel. So if you're if you're an OG, you you already know what we're about to do. But um, if you're new to this channel, I am gonna give you a code word, and then if you want to type it into the comments below, I would absolutely love that. It would totally make my day. It just helps me to see who's sticking around until the very end, like who's the real ones, you know? <laughs> Who has watched an entire hour of Greek footage from me? Oh my goodness, this video is very 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 long. So anyways, the code word is going to be Mati, M A T I. Um, because you know, we're gonna, we're gonna honor the, the evil eye in this video a little bit, especially considering I, I got it tattooed on my body. So, <laughs> so comment Mati if you're still here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you very, very soon. Bye.